Welcome back. I'm Dr. Lilach Saperstein, and in this video, we'll be discussing hearing aids. What are hearing aids? How do they work? Who are they for? And what, very importantly, are their limitations? So as we discussed in the previous video, what is hearing? We learned that hearing begins with the ears, but really the processing of what we are hearing and what do the sounds that we hear mean happens in the brain. And because of that, hearing aids can be extremely beneficial for people with hearing loss to make sounds in their environment loud enough so they can hear them, but there's only so much the hearing aid can do in the processing of speech, which actually happens in the brain. Even when hearing aids are making sounds audible, which means they're loud enough so the person can hear them, they might not be making them discernible, understandable, or clear. One of the biggest complaints of hearing aid users is that they can hear the sounds, but they can't understand what the speech is being said, or they don't have clarity for the sounds that they're hearing. And we know that clarity is a much more complicated piece of the puzzle than just being able to hear the sounds. The second biggest complaint of hearing aid users is difficulty listening in noise. And if there's a lot of noise in the environment, or if it's um, a very windy day, or a very reverberant lecture hall, or a dinner with more than three or four people, a restaurant for sure, any of these kinds of um, environments where there's a lot of noise, the hearing aid is doing I, its best, really. There's a lot of software built into there to lower the noise and pick out voices, but it still is going to be a challenge and difficult to pick out exactly what you want to be hearing in those situations. Now the hearing aid itself is an amazing piece of equipment that has a lot of years of research and development behind it, not only in the way that it's built, but in the software and the internal computer circuitry that's going on inside of the hearing aid. So first, any hearing aid will have a microphone and those microphones are picking up the sounds in the environment. More advanced hearing aids nowadays really also have two microphones and sometimes four microphones. Then they're programmed to be able to pick out which sounds should be attended to, sounds coming from the front or um, sounds that are from closer versus further away and all kinds of processing that's going on when there's more than one microphone in the array, especially when the two hearing aids can communicate one with the other. After the microphone picks up the sounds, they're then transferred into the internal components, the, the processing chip. The way that the hearing aid is going to process sounds is programmed by the programming audiologist. And this means that the, the person's audiogram and their test results and their specific hearing is being programmed into the settings of the hearing aid so that the sound is tailor-made for this person's hearing loss. And not only that, they're then tested, verified, and all sorts of tests to make sure that it's comfortable and that sounds are audible but also comfortable. The programming audiologist will make sure that the sounds are not too loud, that they're not going to cause any damage, but only loud enough so that the person can detect them. And this is done across all the different frequencies from the low pitches to the high pitches. There's also all sorts of settings that audiologists can program to make it perfectly fit for the life of the individual using the hearing aid. For example, the audiologist might put in a specific program for the situation where the person is in a very large and reverberant environment, such as perhaps a place of worship, which might be a very big, large, reverberant room. Or they might have a music setting where different from the speech setting where you're trying to pick out certain frequencies and reduce noise, um, in the music setting, settings might be set so that all the sounds can come in from the low frequency bass to the very high frequency uh, strings. So there, there can be set different memories or different programs within the hearing aid for the user's preference. With children, we know that the hearing aids are extremely, extremely important for them to be able to pick up all the sounds in the environment for as many hours as they are awake because that's how children learn. The way that children learn is mostly and primarily through incidental learning. Using a hearing aid is one of the biggest ways we can support a child with a hearing loss in order to have access to the sounds in their environment all the time so that they hear when people are chattering around them, that they can hear the conversations going on with adults nearby and they can hear fire trucks passing by and they can um, know that if there's sound coming from another room, perhaps it's the sound of a TV and just being able to have sounds in your environment and name them and pick them out 
This stuff kind of happens over time through exposure. And having the hearing aids on all day, every day, is really the best way to get the most hours of incidental learning in, in terms of auditory oral development. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Dr. Lilach Saperstein, and I hope these videos have been helpful for you. If you yeah. have any further questions about how hearing aids work, what hearing aids can and what they can't do, and why hearing aids are so, so important for young children with hearing loss, please let me know. You can reach out to me here in the comments. You can reach out to me on Facebook or on my website, and I'll be happy to be in touch with you.